Oh, for frick's sake, not again. Right, so I've been having a look at this reversing camera issue because, as you know, I've only just replaced the camera a couple of years ago and now that this particular model of Mondeo is discontinued, Ford want close to £300 just for the camera, whereas I replaced the camera and the loom for something like £160 last time. And I'm not 100% convinced that there's actually anything wrong with the camera, given that so many people seem to be having uh, the problem with this reversing camera. Um, I think there might be something more fundamental uh, going wrong. So what I've done is, um, I've just downloaded the wiring diagrams. I've got a temporary subscription for Autodata uh, because when I did the timing belt, um, I just wanted to make sure I did that all correctly. Um, so I've got the wiring diagram. Uh, this is for mainly the CAN bus. And if you have a look here, these are the various modules that are distributed around the car connected to the vehicle area network. And on the um, reversing camera module, that's the one that's in the uh, rear of the car, um, in the trunk. Um, this is the module that takes the video camera uh, connection, uh, there's the coaxial output to the head unit, and then there's this connection unit here, uh, which just connects onto these two wires uh, that go onto the vehicle CAN bus. And this module's really dumb. All it does is listen in for signals on the CAN bus to say that the car's in reverse. And as soon as it notices the car's in reverse, it turns on the camera and then outputs a composite video feed um, on this um, coaxial output. And the head unit just displays any uh, composite feed as soon as it's uh, a valid feed uh, detected on its input. Um, it also looks at the things like the steering wheel angle so that when you turn the wheel uh, there's some um, sort of guidance lines on the camera that um, tell you sort of where the car's going to end up and that's all handled by this module. Right, so on the estate um, version of this car the camera module is just in the back here uh, on the driver's side in the UK uh, and you can see the three connectors that I showed in the picture. So this bottom one is the uh, camera feed this one is the output to the head unit and then there's the green connector which connects to the vehicle area network and that literally just has two wires connected to it, the can high and the can low and nothing else and I was kind of thinking like what would cause uh, the kind of glitchiness that we're seeing and the intermittent behaviour because it doesn't always do it um, and I noticed there's not actually no connection to the chassis ground at all so here we are just looking at the photograph again and you can see that the module just sort of clips onto this uh, clamp unit and then that's just sort of got some spring clips which click into the chassis and I noticed that if I don't start the engine and put the car in reverse sort of 90% of the times the image is absolutely fine um, so I'm starting to think that maybe it's just literally an issue with how they've uh, derived the zero volts um, for this camera module because if it's you know it's a diesel engine um, there's a little bit of shake on the chassis and if it's just vibrating a little bit um, you know you're going to get um, potentially this uh, camera module just not being able to work properly or bouncing the composite signal around because um, it's only got the CAN connections and then 12 volts so if, it, if the video output's bouncing around all over the place because it keeps losing its ground reference it's never going to give a very good uh, video output so what I'm going to try and do is sort of get a ground wire uh, temporarily connected to the chassis of this module and uh, to the chassis of the vehicle and see what happens in that instance. Okay, so what I've done is I've just put a ring terminal on a piece of wire and I've managed to undo that uh, little torque screw in the corner of the module. Uh, it's an M2.5 screw and then uh, this earth wire just temporarily connects up. So there's just a, uh, a little chassis earth bolt here. I've sort of trapped it under it for now just to test the theory. Um, so the module's down here and then there's a bolt here I think for the rear lights and uh, some of the ele other electricals in this area. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll just try starting up the car and see if that's made any difference. Uh, let's put it in reverse and see what happens. And there we go. I think that seems to have worked. So for the past week or so it's been playing up every single time that I've put it in reverse so that certainly seems to have fixed the issue. I'm gonna tidy up those connections in the boot, uh, find a better point to bolt that earth cable to but that seems to have uh, fixed the problem. 
Okay, so I left the green and yellow wire, I should have used black really, uh, but that goes up here and you can just about see uh, there is already a hole that exists. Uh, there's one that's threaded, I think it takes an M8 screw, uh, but what I fitted is an M5 through the hole next to it with a shake proof washer uh, and then also uh, one of those nuts that's got um, the rubber on the inside to stop it coming loose uh, and that's just connected to another ring crimp and that seems to have done the job. Right, so we'll give it just one more test before I uh, declare that it's working for now. Obviously I'll post back if I have any further troubles, uh, but if I put it in reverse that's definitely working, so I've got the camera work. I'll just try reversing. You can see when I turn the steering wheel those lines bend, so that's the data it's getting off the CAN bus. Uh, I think it also gets the parking sensor data off the CAN bus as well, because when we get close to an object um, you'll start to see the lines indicating sort of which sensor is being triggered. So you can see it's on the left hand side here near the garage. Uh, and then when you take the car out of neutral, that camera module uh, leaves the image up for a few seconds and then it goes back to the normal screen. So that seems to be working. Um, the camera last time did fix it, so I'm not quite sure what happened, whether that's um, just playing around with the box in the boot was enough to um, sort of make a better connection with the chassis again because it does just have those those clips uh, which isn't a lot really uh, but if you can imagine uh, plugging in the connectors probably moves the module around a bit uh, and then uh, makes the connection okay but I mean it worked for two, two years or so flawlessly and then just started playing up again uh, recently so I don't know what whether that's just how long it takes any oxides to form uh, but it certainly seems like an omission uh, in the design uh, because yeah there really is just the vehicle area network and then a 12 volt connection uh, to the module um, so I don't know a lot of people have taken their car in for warranty work and uh, tried to have the camera replaced and you know it's come back within a couple of months uh, it's taken me about an hour or two just to have a proper look and try and work out what's going on I could do some more tests we could have a look, uh, I could disconnect that chassis lead um, and have a look to see if we can see ground bounce or something like that on the oscilloscope but uh, this is just my first analysis on, on an alternate to what could be the problem rather than just the cameras being at fault uh, and it's a fairly simple fix for anyone to do it really was just a piece of wire um, a Torx bit to undo the screw uh, in the corner of the module uh, and then uh, just finding a chassis point on the, uh, at the rear of the car so it's been quite a long time since I posted any videos. Um, I probably will be doing another one on the car soon because I need to change the rear bushes, the rear trailing arm bushes, which are quite common on these Mondeos. But then hopefully I should be getting back to doing some electronics videos soon. It's just been a bit hectic. We've moved house. Uh, having Camden, actually I wanted to focus most of my time on him uh, rather than making videos. And I've only just really got the lab sort of back up and running properly again. So. Uh, hopefully I'll post some more videos soon, certainly there should be one on this car on the trailing arm bushes, I was going to do one on the timing belt but uh, it was just too difficult to get the camera in anywhere so uh, I decided not to do that one. But anyway hopefully this helps some people, again if I find that this stops working uh, I'll take another look at the issue but I just don't believe that the camera can be faulty twice in a row uh, from the amount of time that it actually gets used just seems doesn't seem plausible. So hopefully you found this video useful uh, and thanks for watching.